With its 3GB of VRAM on a 384-bit bus, the R9280 is one of the more odd GPUs from the GCN1 architecture. In this video, we'll see if this Tahiti-based GPU is still deserving of the fine wine comparison. The R9280 was not the first to use the Tahiti GPU. The same chip with the same specifications and same on-screen right now was first used in the HD 7950 card, released two years earlier. The chip will however get a few modifications before being reused again in the 300 series. The card is rated for a TDP of 200 watts, and this variant from Sapphire uses a variation of the Dual X cooling system that was first used on the HD7000 cards. On the 200 series, it was then given a fresh looking shroud to cover the same assembly of 4 heat pipes and a generous fin stack. The two fans used here have 85mm in diameter and are PVM controlled. The VRM MOSFETs have their own heatsink and all memory chips were supposed to contact the cold plate, with the exception of the most bottom memory chip. If this was not by accident, <laughs> it then makes for a very unusual design. This beefy assembly manages to keep the card at 78C in heaven for a delta over ambient of 53 degrees, so this is not all dead weight. As for the test results, we've been changing the methodology lately, and besides data collected at low settings, we now also try to find the best graphical settings where the card still performs adequately. The target is 30fps for the 1% lows for single player, and 60 for the same metric for multiplayer. This is probably the last time this card gets bottlenecked by the Z230 workstation from HP. The CPU is the same 4th gen Xeon equivalent of the i7-4770, and the RAM is also the same 32GB of DDR3 running at 1600MHz in dual channel. Rainbow Six Siege opens the gaming results section. The title was tested using the CAN benchmark at low settings. 1080 resolution and 100% render scale doesn't quite do it, not with the R9-80. The 1% lows run in the low 50s, coupled with an average of 73 FPS. The experience is fine, but not quite what we aim for for a multiplayer game. Lowering the resolution or the render scale will allow you to play the game at better frame rates, going up to 127 FPS on average and 84 FPS for the 1% lows at 720 resolution and 50% render scale. Doom Eternal was showing some subtle hints that it doesn't quite like the GCN1 era cards, or maybe their drivers. So while the FPS count was fine, your own health might not be after the first level of this game. When the finals came out, I was more than happy to test the game with 4 of the GPUs that were supposed to perform somewhat the same. Back then, the R9 to 80 performed the worst of the bunch. Well, things only went downhill from there. I tried launching the game and I was greeted with this error screen. Is the MD5 wine slowly turning sour? Fallout 4 is one of the older AAA titles used for testing and the R9280 has no problem running the game at 1080 resolution and ultra settings. Granted, the average is 38 FPS in Diamond City, but the 1% loss of 35 makes for a consistent frame delivery. As for the outside area with lots of vegetation, both metrics went up by quite a bit, to 58 and 46 FPS respectively. At low settings and 1080 resolution, Apex Legends clears the bar of 60 FPS for the 1% lows. The average goes into the low 90s, so no real reason to drop the resolution. You do get a boost in FPS, with the average reaching as high as 137 at 720 resolution, but I don't think that it's worth trading your ability to spot enemies at longer ranges. The only way I got Shadow of the Tomb Raider to meet the 1% 30 FPS bar was at 1080 resolution and low settings. The average got up to mid 50s, so the game is playable. The behavior at higher settings is quite weird, however. Note the similar 1% lows and average between medium and high settings at 1080 resolution. What do you think this is all about? I tested Counter Strike 2 at low settings. Higher FPS is better in this game, and fortunately, the R928 is capable of going above 120 FPS at 1080 resolution. Unfortunately, the R928 is already CPU bottlenecked at this resolution. Dropping to 1600 by 900 or 720 will not improve your performance. The average stays at around 120 FPS and the 1% lows remains above 60 FPS, so the overall experience is good. I found that the playability limit for Borderlands 3 is 1080 resolution and medium settings, with the average FPS reaching 40 FPS and the 1% lows managing 30. My best experience had me convinced that a drop to 1600 by 900 would be enough to play the game at high settings. But as it turned out, not even 720 resolution would do it. The average fell to mid 30s and the 1% lows to low 20s. When X Defiant launched, I found the R9 to 80 performing okay. 
Testing in the training map and in a live match showed no regression in performance, with the real match numbers being, as expected, about 80% of the numbers from training. Based on that, 1600 by 900 is the highest resolution to be used with the R9 to 80, with averages in 140s and 1% lows in the high 80s. I hope for a bit more from Resident Evil 4, especially since the somewhat lower class RX 460 did pretty well. Unfortunately, this was not the case, and while the average FPS of 49 is fine for a single player game, the 1% loss of 23 is not. And no, this is not 1080 high settings, this is 720 and the prioritized performance preset, but with FSR disabled. I play Fortnite in performance mode, since it provides a mix of good visibility and high frame rates. 1080 resolution is fine, even though the 1% loss is in the mid 50s. The numbers will increase when dropping the resolution, but with the 1080 already averaging 170, we quickly hit a platform button like as shown by the average for both 1600x900 and 720, same 200 ish FPS. With the knowledge of how the car performed in the regular mode, it should come as no surprise that Fortnite Reload runs into a system bottleneck. The 1% lows at 1080 look a bit weird when compared with the same statistic for the 1600x900 or 720. Still, the game experience is good, and the key to improving it, in my case, is the player's skill. Terminator Resistance is one of the easier to play games, and the R9 to 80 has no problems with it. 1080 resolution and epic settings has the card averaging 48 FPS and the 1% lows in the mid 30s. You should be able to play the game just fine at these settings, but if needed, you can drop the settings ever so slightly if the situation demands it. Overwatch 2 does not seem to be platform limited. The FPS increases almost linearly with the drop in resolution, from 174 at 1080 resolution to 327 at 720. And with the 1% lows at about 75% from the average, the game experience is good. These numbers were captured in the tutorial at low settings with no anti-aliasing. An actual match will reduce those numbers to 80%. This means that 1080 is definitely fine. The benchmark in Far Cry 6 clears the 30 FPS for the 1% lows bar at 1080 resolution and medium settings. And just like with Borderlands 3, I expected that a slight drop in resolution would unlock a good game experience at high settings. But apparently not even a big drop down to 720 is enough, and the 1% lows went worse, from late teens at 1600 by 900 to only 14. Dota 2 runs fine at 1080 resolution and low settings. I would take these numbers with a pinch of salt. Both the average of 94 and the 1% lows of 52 don't tell me a lot, especially since some of the weaker cards will record higher FPS values. I tried playing control at medium settings. You know, all that trade the excess performance for better visual stuff. It's not quite like that, I'm afraid. Low settings works fine if it at 1080 resolution, with the average going in the high 60s and the 1% lows in the high 40s. Medium settings, however, work only at 720, with the frame rate averaging 67 and the 1% lows reaching a good enough 38. The R920 has no problems running GTA 5 at 1080 low settings. 121 FPS for the average and 73 for the 1% lows. The game's recommended settings are however mostly on high, and the card can still deliver a good gaming experience. 79 FPS for the average and 56 for the 1% lows. I use the same Mariana mission to test the card in Warframe at 1080 resolution and mostly low settings. The average FPS reached 237 and the 1% lows 145. This is more than what's needed for this PVA title, so, you know, trade the excess performance for better visuals? If you're into your usual easier to run multiplayer games, the R9280 will do you just fine. Same goes for some of the older AAA titles. However, the card is enjoying the legacy driver support treatment from AMD, and this ultimately leads to situations like the finals. This is where the 40 USD price was supposed to save these cards. But with 1050 Ti's occasionally dropping to 30, it becomes more and more difficult to recommend a card that consumes almost 3 times more power over a card that still has game-ready driver support. It's a pity. The card can still run most of the games that I like. However, just because it has a massive, and I might add, pretty looking cooler, it doesn't mean it's worth more than modern cars that perform just as well. If you see one for more than 30 USD, then just move along. Anyway, that's all that I have for you on the R9-80. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked it and I'll see you for the next one.